free and open source community has been really doing some wonders and uh, this is no different this is a project I have been looking at for a long time and this is the alpha version 6 of make human and we're gonna look at that right now on Spatry's cup of Linux Now make human is a 3D modeler that allows you to make anatomically correct uh, 3D characters. Doesn't have a whole lot to offer right now. It's still in development. It's still in alpha. But let me tell you, this is really uh, starting to shape up into something that's pretty nice. You have some view settings here where you can look at your characters in uh, wireframe. You can look at them smooth shaded. Uh, background that sort of thing looks like wireframe and the thing is it is slow to respond you will notice up here that I am burning up quite a bit of CPU here another really interesting feature is that this actually has an anaglyph mode so you can actually view your images in 3d and um, wow that is eye-popping 3d there let me tell you folks uh, <laughs> very interesting to say the least um, so you can uh, do your modeling in 3d and that sort of thing and uh, there are a number of other cool little things that this does for instance you can change the gender of your character from male to female just by moving some sliders you can even define the character's age just by moving the sliders to the left or to the right. You can change their weight, their skin tones, and uh, all kinds of other neat things in this uh, main, um, or that's the muscle tone it looks like there. So you have some options there. You also have some details that you can change, such as uh, since we're look, working with anatomically correct characters, you can change uh, their uh, genitalia, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not going to really go over into that. This is a family show, so we're not going to be doing any uh, anything like that there. But these options are available, and you also have different modifiers for each of those as well. You also have um, you also have uh, symmetry um, modifiers as well. Uh, most people for the human face, you know, or uh, other parts of the body, they're not perfectly symmetrical, and I think that's what makes everybody unique. You know, if we were just perfectly symmetrical all over, that sort of thing. Uh, so you have a s symmetry options that you can set up here to basically you know give that character and maybe just simple slight things you know to give that extra sense of realism to your characters that you're creating and there are additional options that you can tweak and this is all done simply with little sliders and that sort of thing very much like poser but this is like a free and open sourced poser there are also some hair options here if you go into uh, your library um, you can look at some of those features this is the hair color feature here you can also um, do different measurements with your character waist circumference um, uh, chest distortions that sort of thing and then of course you can uh, alter your background here and uh, this is your file here we're going to look at that in a moment because I'm going to try and uh, and I've never done this before I've just been playing with the software to see what I can do I'm gonna see if it will allow me to make a blender file or an object that I can import into Blender. We're going to actually do that in a little bit here. And then we have some posing. Okay, and apparently, um, I'm not seeing anything here yet. Let's go into the library. 
and now we can pick out some hair for the model. Uh, why don't we check this one out? Let's see how that looks. Okay, now our character has some hair on him. We have rendering options. Obviously, I am not going to render him here. I'm going to do that in Blender if I'm able to. Okay, we have some shader options that are available to us. We can have no shaders and uh, some different kinds of shading options. We can make them look like a cartoon. Uh, the Fong shader and then a skin shader. I think I'll just go with the Fong shader for right now. Okay, and it looks like we have other settings here under each of these titles, so that is something that uh, could be useful. Um, let's go into the pose section. Okay, great, we have a skeleton here that we could use to pose this. I wonder if this skeleton will actually follow us um, when we ex uh, save this file and import it into Blender. So we'll go into File and we will save this. Let's go ahead, go ahead and call this um, Test. And we will save that. Okay, interestingly enough, this actually saved my model uh, it gave, gives you a test bitmap and then the test uh, MHM file here. So um, I don't know why I was thinking it would save a blend file. I thought I was reading something like that. So in export, we have some options here for um, Wavefront Object, Blender Exchange, which is MHX uh, Colada, MD5, and Stereo uh, Lithography. So why don't we uh, check the Blender Exchange, and we'll call this test underscore mesh. That way I can identify what this is. Okay, and then we will export it, and hopefully it's in that folder now. And it may just take a moment to uh, generate this. Okay, now it appears that this has uh, it has a place where whenever you save your files uh, in your make human directory usually that's in your home folder uh, there's a place for the models and then a place for your exports and these are MHX files here okay all fine and dandy that looks good so now that we know where these are let's go ahead and try and uh, use them in Blender so you'll definitely want to download this, check it out, tweak it, play with it. But remember, it is still an alpha, so don't expect any miracles. Don't expect to be able to do any major production work with this presently. But the thing is, I'm liking the direction that this is going in. I'm going to go ahead and exit this software now. And then let's go ahead and open up Blender. Okay, now that we have Blender open, we're greeted with our uh, wonderful little splash screen here. I've been spending a lot of time in Blender, and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, with the cube selected, I'm just going to press X and delete this. Okay, and now from the file menu, let's go ahead and try and import this thing and see what we can do here. All right, doesn't look like there is an option for but let's try and append this item. And I'm going to go into Make Human Folder, Exports. Okay, hmm, nothing there. Okay, my bad, I forgot to enable the add-on and this is how you do it. In order to be able to import these files, you're gonna need to go into User Preferences and do a search for MHX and then the Import Export Make Human uh, plugin is in here. And this comes with the latest version of Blender. Just put a check mark next to that. And then now we should be able to import that file. So let's go ahead and do that now, File. And let's import a Make Human MHX. And here we go. I'll select this one here. And then select Import MHX.
and nothing happened. <sighs> well, it, it Make Human is still alpha software. So unfortunately, what I would have to do is, from Make Human, I would have to export a wavefront object file, and then I would have to manually rig it myself. But the thing is, this program does uh, need some more time to mature. But since I've got Blender open, why not give you guys a little bit of an update on some of the things I've been doing here. Okay, uh, first let's go ahead and open up some recent things here. And, um, hmm... First, we'll have a look at the penguin. Uh, now, uh, you will notice uh, there have been some changes to this. And namely, what I have done here is I've actually created a new skeleton with which to power this. And thanks to some uh, great tutorials online, now I have a nice mesh that I can actually um, do some uh, really cool... Um, animations with. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, twist this around. Now inverse kinematics are available to me and now just by selecting um, some bones here I can get better poses out of my character. And let's go ahead and do that. I'll just run a little grab on here. Now I can actually pose his whole arm if I want to or if I wish I can even um, you know, position him, make him dance better, and uh, all in all, uh, done a lot of better things with this. And there is an excellent tutorial online uh, that taught, that took me step by step through uh, building the skeleton. Um, and one of the hardest things I had to set up on this character was making his eyes blink. Um, of all things, I wanted to have you know, perfect looking eyelids and that sort of thing. So let's go into object mode here. I'll hide the skeleton and then uh, we can go into where I've actually let me uh, go in here and I created a shape key where now his eyes will blink. We probably can't see that right now because he's in textured mode, but if I go into solid mode, you will now see that we have a really nice looking eye blink here. That took a lot of work. I, I think it took me like 10 to 15 tries because every time I tried making this, uh, it, would, it would just goof up and I finally figured out a way to do that. And using this same technique. I found that I was able to actually apply this to my butterfly. So let me open up the butterfly. And I think you guys can see where I'm going with this. If I go into my uh, butterfly, um, you will notice I've done something similar with that. So now I have his wings flapping using a simple shape key. Now basically, let me explain what a shape key is. Basically you have a basis or a model base and then uh, you will create a new key here where you will modify that mesh and then in your timeline later on I'm going to be doing some animation tutorials later on where I'm going to be using objects that have both skeleton structures and shape keys. These are wonderful tools for uh, animation and that sort of thing. So now that I have my characters ready, I'm ready to start having a little bit of fun with this. And uh, I hope you guys have some special 3D glasses because uh, I'm thinking about the possibility of releasing something in 3D. I don't know yet, but I would like to know you guys uh, you guys impressions on that. I'm not going to release uh, a vi you know two versions of a video, one 2D and one 3D. It's either going to be 3D or not. So let me know what you guys think. Do you want to see a 3D video or would you prefer just a really cool 2D animation? Uh, I'd love your feedback on that. Okay, well that's all for now. Um, 
Sorry for the digression, but I figured, hey, since we had Blender open, I'd uh, do a little bit of an update with you guys. I've got a little bit of free time coming up, so I am definitely going to be uh, tinkering around and toying around a little bit more in Blender and start throwing together some new titles, new animations, new, 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 and uh, more multimedia applications I'm looking at as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Thank you.